Next one is a painting I absolutely love. I think it's extremely beautiful. It's called The Angel of Death One. And here we see those principles of study of nature. We see the flowers on the foreground. We see those beautiful uh, little flowers and some sort of grass on the left. We also see the background with a lot of trees and uh, some sort of houses in the background. And I think this painting is extremely reminiscent of Renaissance. So this is the kind of background that you might see uh, in the works of Leonardo, for example, uh, or even Raphael, I think, because it has this Italian-like uh, mountains, houses and trees, which I think uh, really reminds us of some of the works by Leonardo. And also this painting has a quite strange perspective. You notice one tree is extremely big and then the angel is extremely imposing. He's so much bigger than the figure. The theme of death was an increasingly popular theme in uh, her work, in her paintings. So this is the most kind of overt representation of the subject and it demonstrates her spiritualist beliefs that death is to be welcomed and not feared. So here we see the angel of death and he's a beautiful and benign figure and he's gently comforting the frail female figure who had in his sight. So the young woman appears to have had a hard life signified by the arid landscape behind her. So the way this painting is uh, kind of meant to be understood is that one part of the landscape is empty and represents her hard life and then the other side of the painting on the right uh, has this beautiful landscape which is her way forward her going into heaven and we see this especially in the flowers so the set grass on the left and the beautiful flowers on the right but what makes this painting particularly interesting is obviously the angel of death it is an unusual representation because the angel of death is not scary and if you remove uh, his kind of tools of death you would not necessarily think he was an angel of death. Maybe you would think that he's an angel wearing a brown cloak. Uh, and he's very beautiful, especially, I think, the wings that are moving. The figure in her face, I think we see almost a happiness because if we're meant to believe that her life was hard, you can then understand why she looks almost happy and ready to be accepted by the angel of death and to certain sadness and tiredness in her face, I think. That we can see as well. This I think is one of the most interesting paintings by De Morgan. It's called The Gilded Cage and I think it is quite clear why. We see this bored looking man who is much older than the beautiful young woman on the left and we can see figures playing outside, everyone is having fun but she is meant to be here and she's beautiful and young and she is almost like his prized possession and obviously we see that she has gold robes, she's rich and he's well paid but she's not having any of the fun that the people of her age are having outside and it is further signified obviously by the bird caught um, and held in the gilded cage on the right. And this is much more, as I said a lot, she tried to fight against the injustices uh, in women's life and this is exactly that. She talks a lot about the society, a lot about the women being married to all the men and then being kept like possessions like his books or his jewelry rather than being treated like human beings and it's a patriarchal society where she is meant to be confined in her domestic space after she was married and almost doesn't have any rights like the canary on the right does not. What is interesting about this painting is also that he has a very sad face and he also seems not to be particularly happy with the arrangement. It can be because she's unhappy or maybe because he understands that this marriage didn't bring him anything that he wanted, you know, despite all the riches, it does not bring you happiness. 